Did you ever wonder if certain foods have a direct effect on your health? Well, I'm here to solve that mystery since you are the foods you eat. Welcome to the Nutrition Facts Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Greger. Today we answer a wide variety of your questions, like the best way to treat insomnia, more information on how to lower your cholesterol, and whether or not you can eat too many beans. Hello, this is Dr. Michael Greger coming to you live from my treadmill, my stationary treadmill, because so many people complain that I was making people seasick. I don't want to make people sick. That's kind of the antithesis of what I'm trying to do. Let's get to your questions. First one up is nutritionally for uh, weight loss longevity to peanuts. Are they more like nuts or legumes? And which nuts and seeds have the highest concentration of plant sterols to bring down LDL? Um, so uh, nutritionally, um, uh, peanuts are very similar to tree nuts. And, and so for in terms of weight loss, very similar kind of uh, caloric density. Um, and in terms of longevity, walnuts really beat all other tree nuts as well as peanuts. Um, and I don't think uh, 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 peanut butter works at all. Does silica prevent uh, AGEs? No. I, uh, I mean, I no. Uh, not that I know of, nor would it boost collagen. I do have a webinar on collagen-boosting foods. Check it out. Should the government tax high saturated fat uh, foods? Uh, whether it should or whether it could. <laughs> so there was a, I do have videos talking about the Danish meat tax. Um, so effective that the animal agriculture lobby made sure it did not last very long. But just as we were starting to see uh, significant public health, public health benefits, really unfortunately. Um, any tips on repopulating my gut after a course of antibiotics? Well, um, uh, probiotics, taking probiotic supplements actually makes things worse, actually delays the rebalancing of your gut flora, which is uh, something that uh, I discovered in researching how not to age. I check out my probiotics chapter. All we can do is just start feeding. Uh, I mean, there's certain um, antibiotics that absorb in the small intestine don't really affect much of the gut. But if you're experiencing gastrointestinal symptoms, I would make sure you get lots of prebiotics to feed the uh, stragglers. Uh, you know, we're not sterilizing the gut. You just may, your gut microbes may take a hit, so you feed them lots of good food, and they are uh, will be uh, fruitful and multiply on their own. All right. Are there any health benefits you can get from coffee, but not from green tea? Absolutely. So coffee has chlorogenic acid, the autophagy-boosting um, antioxidant. Um, green tea does not. Three cups of coffee a day decrease all-cause mortality by 13%. Three cups of tea a day, 24%, but by a different mechanism. Actually, ironically, a pro-oxidant mechanism um, rallying our antioxidant defenses, antioxidant defenses in a interesting uh, that which doesn't kill us make a stronger hormetic mechanism. Anyway, they both work from a, a different uh, mechanisms, so we would assume it would be an additive effect. Um, and so eat both or drink both. So I started out with coffee, now I'm drinking tea. Max up any advice to help with sleep? Absolutely, not just falling asleep, but staying asleep. Absolutely. Um, so treating insomnia is all about sleep hygiene, sleep conditioning, and I have, uh, I think I've talked about the five roles of each in uh, the sleep uh, chapter of how not to age. And I think sleep chapter of how not to diet also has the same information. Um, also, um, uh, warm baths, um, either foot baths or full body baths or showers uh, before going to bed, even just warming, wearing warm socks at night. Um, improve uh, improve sleep. And through an interesting mechanism, which I talk about in How Not to Age, check it out. Go to your local public library, check it out. Okay, next up, I've taken AMLA. AMLA is dried Indian gooseberry powder, and it lowered cholesterol levels by about 10%. Okay, um, that's great. Um, what, if there was one thing to lower high blood pressure, what would it be? Uh, hibiscus tea, probably, or ground flax seeds would be my two best bets. But uh, um, less than a teaspoon a day of ground black sesame seeds also drops uh, systolic blood pressures by about eight points. If sustained, that alone could decrease your risk of stroke by about a quarter. How exciting is that? Okay. Or Phil Hampton says, what are my thoughts? Oh, echinacea. I talk about echinacea. Kill high levels of streptococcus. Oh, so I talk about echinacea being useless in terms of um, uh, upper respiratory tract infections. I have not heard of of anything about gut streptococcus um, and echinacea. But uh, if it's being 
I know. I, I mean, the, the, the thing that was most, uh, we thought we had the greatest evidence base for it was upper respiratory tract infections. In fact, and it turns out it doesn't even work for that. that. I can tell you. Bonnie says, how much fat to have each meal to get sufficient nutrition? This uh, questioner, what Bonnie is asking, is talking about the absorption of fat-soluble nutrients. So if you eat a meal without any fat in it, so if you like a salad with no nuts or seeds or avocado with a fat-free dressing, you are not going to maximally absorb all the fat-soluble um, uh, fat nutrients, like all those carotenoid nutrients that are so beneficial, like the beta carotene, the greens, etc. Um, so uh, it does not take much. I have a video about that, and I give exact values, but it was just a few, I forget, like a few walnuts or a quarter of an avocado, if I remember, but check out that video. But yeah, it does not take much. And yeah, um, soybeans, we certainly, chickpeas are low in fat, low in fat but uh, um, soybeans may have enough um, uh, fat, um, but you know, you just got to sprinkle, you know, flax seeds onto your food anyway. Uh, ground flax seeds is part of my daily dozen. Um, so that's another great way to uh, make sure you just have just enough fat to uh, boost the absorption of your fat soluble nutrients. Sarcomia, oh, sarcoma with perivit vertebral invasion. Just got diagnosed, diagnosed with that. That's not good. Um, so sarcoma is a cancer of kind of connective tissues. Um, oh, that's a fantastic question. So what can I actually do? Um, that is the subject of what I hope is going to be my next book, if the publisher agrees, um, book on cancer. So I'll be doing daily cancer protocols for all 16 or so cancers um, that kill 5,000 Americans or more. Um, although uh, sarcoma may not actually make the list, but fingers crossed. Uh, so I just don't know. But there are certainly are foods that ha can improve survival um, for different types of cancer, different foods for different cancers. Um, but it's uh, sarcoma is not one I've looked into and may not look into for the book. I don't think that actually made the list. I think 16th was melanoma. Um, so uh, cancer is more rare than that, killing fewer Americans than that will not make the list, unfortunately. Already, it's going to be a massive book. With Daily Dozen, um, uh, I get all my vitamin needs except for one, only get 300 milligrams of choline versus the RDA 550. I can't eat soy and can't, uh, don't want to eat more broccoli. Should I supplement? No, you shouldn't supplement. Um, uh, I just type in choline into nutritionfacts.org. In fact, so choline is an essential nutrient, um, but... Uh, you don't want to get too much because see, bad bacteria can taint, change, turn choline to trimethylamine, which is oxidized by our liver and uh, wreak havoc in the body. So, um, uh, but you should be able to get all the choline you need from whole foods without taking supplements. Are there health issues associated with silicone cooking utensils? Not that I've seen. Um, it's not, I don't think it's something I've looked at particularly, but I, I did do a lot of videos on cooking implants and pots and pans. I assume if something was bad, it would pop up. Um, but uh, I have not seen anything offhand. But if you do a PubMed search and something comes up, send it my way. Because I cook with uh, silicone. Uh, and so I'd want to know. Your, my, oh, my books are life-changing. Thank you, Fernanda. Um, is calcium supplement from algae better? No. No, 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 they, no. So we should not be supplementing for calcium. Not only um, is it not particularly effective, it's not safe. Um, and regardless of what kind of expense, see, you know, calcium is so cheap. You know, calcium carbonate is just chalk, right? So it's dirt cheap. And so that's why supplement companies love coming up with all sorts of fancy coral calcium or algae calcium or whatever calcium so they can charge you more money, but it's just a scam. And in this case, a dangerous scam because you're getting um, uh, too much of a, a calcium spike in your bloodstream. Check out my videos for more. Fernandez back. Would I recommend statins for someone whose LDL was 190? Oh, Jesus. Uh, 90, 90's good. Uh, uh, I, no, not, but 90's way too high. Um, uh, oh, and especially with a high LP little a, um, which is uh, largely genetically determined. So you need to get your LDL absolutely as low as possible, certainly under 74 primary prevention. Um, uh, and so I would uh, go on the portfolio diet, which is a plant-based diet with particular foods that lower um, LDL cholesterol and see how far you can take that. And if you can't get it down to target, then I absolutely talk to your um, physician about prescribing you drugs. People at Mastering Diabetes claim the dietary fat, not any dietary fat, but particularly saturated fat causes insulin resistance. In their diet, they um, restrict 
um, fats at 10, 15 percent. Is that necessary? Well, that certainly is um, uh, more typical of uh, how our species evolved, getting about 10 percent calories from fat. Um, but uh, but the insulin resistance is really a problem with saturated fat in the context of excess calorie intake. Uh, but uh, yeah, but, uh, you know, different fats are kind of a mixture of various fats. And so, for example, there's some saturated fat in nuts, even though nuts um, uh, have, uh, have uh, you know, overall benefit. Um, uh, this because of all the other wonderful things in nuts. But uh, I could, uh, um, I think if you just uh, restrict to saturated fat, which is meat, dairy, and junk, you should be able to uh, um, uh, reverse your insulin resistance. Do we need to worry about pH value making a DIY serum? DIY vitamin C. Oh, you know, I wouldn't mix the vitamin C and niacinamide together in a serum. I would do them separately just because, um, yeah, I, I don't know what the vitamin C would be doing to the niacinamide. Uh, fascinated by longevity research. Wild blueberry. Well, wild blueberry, you would like my new book. What specific blood markers? Oh, interesting. Yeah, so there's... um. All sorts of uh, interesting kind of measures of biological aging. There's lots of companies trying to find out to be the best. Uh, probably uh, the kind of following the epigenetic clock is probably most uh, uh, most well validated. But uh, I'm not sure what uh, commercial. Um, I know what tests used in kind of a laboratory setting, but not sure what is available commercially. Hello, says Niall. Uh, I was wondering if I could give you insight on artificial. Oh, sucralose. I got. Uh, videos on sucralose. Um, yes, there is a health concern. It has to do with uh, um, uh, causing dysbiosis in the gut. You know, the sucralose people like to brag how their artificial sweetener doesn't get absorbed into the bloodstream, so therefore it's safe. But guess what? If it doesn't get absorbed in the bloodstream, what does it do? It ends up in the colon where it mucks with our microbiome. So don't do it. If you want to see the science, just type in sucralose into nutritionfacts.org. Are puffed grains unhealthy? Yeah. Um, Puffing, the puffing, uh, as well as kind of explosion, extrusion, um, all sorts of things to make kind of breakfast cereals. It's just ways to kind of increase the glycemic index. There's not something we want. So yeah, I would. Uh, they they that are not even if they're whole grains. There's better ways to get your grains, like whole intact grain. Okay, Victoria's husband, sixty three, been following whole food plant based diet for six years. Total cholesterol still. Oh my God, LDLs way too high. Are they um. Yeah, well, so, um, you know, a lot of people claim they're on whole food blend based diet or eating, you know, uh, you know, vegan junk food that has like, you know, tropical oils like coconut oil or something. That'd be the first thing. But if you really are eating whole foods and your LDL is that extraordinarily high, um, I would try the, the portfolio diet, as I talked about before, David Jenkins, University of Toronto. Um, that's the best diet for maximally lowering cholesterol. But if you can't get it down to target, then uh, you need to figure out another way. Now, so there's lots of things you can take that also lower cholesterol, like the AMLA and things like that. Um, uh, but again, if you can't do it by diet, you have to get it down some way. Um, and that can include drugs, higher dose drugs, multiple drugs, whatever it takes to get your LDL, um, which is a primary risk factor for the number one killer in women. Okay, Wealthy says, what do we think about Peter Rogers? Never heard of him. A more radical version of me. How funny. Now I want to Google him. I never heard of him. Can I roast nuts on low-temperature doid uh, form of acrylamides? Um, uh, it's not the acrylamides we worry about with nuts. Acrylamides are more um, um, high-dry heat of carbohydrates like crackers and, and uh, french fries, potato chips. Um, the, roasting, the nut roasting causes formation of advanced glycation end products. Um, so, um, uh, I think it starts occurring at like 250 Fahrenheit. So, uh, it's not really roasting nuts, but if you can keep your nuts under that temperature, uh, presumably you'd be able to keep your AGEs low. Um, I find them easier to chew than raw. Raw, I don't know why raw nuts would be hard to chew. Like raw walnuts, are they hard to chew? All right. Can I eat too much protein from beans? I hear doctors say more and more a cup a day of beans. Oh, I can't eat more than a couple of days. In fact, I recommend in my daily dozen, a cup and a half, right? Three servings a day of legumes um, with a serving being a half cup. How many beans can we eat? We need, why are we hurting your kidneys? Um, beans do not hurt your kidneys. In fact, I mean, that's the recommendation is switch over to plant protein for protecting, uh, um, for chronic uh, kidney failure patients. 
um, to protect one's kidneys by decreasing animal protein intake. Uh, if you have extremely uh, poor kidney function, then they, they want to decrease your protein overall, but you need to talk to a renal dietitian, definitely. I ate, Anthony ate a whole food plant-based diet for four months. Oh my God, lost 75 pounds. Congratulations. But then four months, gained back, oh, 40 pounds. Um, so I talk in How Not to Diet. Um, I talk about what is behind the stalling of weight loss and uh, gaining back weight. And so check out, go to your local public library, get How Not to Diet and go to that chapter. Sorry to hear that. Isabel says um, she's a huge fan. That's nice. Can I advise what type of what a, oh, a type one diabetic shouldn't, should I need to prevent diabetic bone disease? I don't think of diabetes causing bone disease. Um, but I mean, type one diabetes can be certainly serious. Um, you know, the, the defeating diabetes or mastering diabetes folks, um, know a lot about type one diabetes. So basically you're trying to improve insulin resistance just to make your body more sensitive to the insulin that you are injecting, but you will be injecting. Or, or that your child be injecting insulin for their whole lives, critically important um, uh, to, uh, you know, to maintain, uh, you know, primarily to not bottom out and, and have life-threatening hypoglycemia. Um, so, yeah, it's very close, very important to work very closely with your uh, medical professionals to make sure that they um, keep their um, blood sugar levels st stable. And we can do that by improving uh, insulin sensitivity so you can get into a regular regimen of know exactly how much insulin you need every day. How long to microwave 1.5 ounces of mushrooms to make sure the polyphenol oxidase is gone? Oh, this is such a high level question. I love it. What is the optimal amount of mushrooms to eat every day? I heard too much is a waste. Huh. Well, I don't think so. I've certainly never heard that. No, no, eat as much mushrooms as you want. Oh, speaking of which, I just made some pasta sauce and totally forgot my... Uh, uh, my porcini mushrooms, I'm totally going to add some. So I did a like an hour long Q and A talking about polyphenol oxidase. Um, and didn't I talk about how much don't call me, go to the, go to the video where I actually show the data on how many seconds it does not take much. What are my thoughts about the NIH report talking on a study saying spermidine can cause stroke that I've never heard of. All right. Now you got me here. Spermidine. I am typing it and to uh, PubMed as we speak. Spermidine, serum spermidine in relation to stroke. So it's not talking about taking spermidine, it's talking about serum spermidine. Um, but um, serum spermidine um, is linked to lower all-cause mortality, which is the most important thing, is the most predictive nutrient um, uh, following, you know, hundreds of individuals between ages 45 and 64, found 146 components of, the, of people's diet. Spermidine was the single most, con um, associated with uh, a longevity. Um, so uh, presumably that would wash out any stroke effect if there is, even is a stroke effect. Um, and they're certainly not talking about, uh, so uh, it's possible there's reverse causation, whatever, but um, that is totally interesting. I'm gonna look into that when I do my spermidine update. But so far, um, uh, I would uh, stick to my recommendation because of all cause mortality, that's the most important thing but uh, I will look into it. Thank you so much for letting me know. That's exciting. How I explain ApoB and how it compares to LDL for atherosclerosis risk? Um, so ApoB is kind of the protein that, uh, for, that's kind of part of LDL, um, uh, and just, uh, but it's also protein found in other kind of lipoprotein um, conglomerates. But uh, LDL continues to be uh, recommended as the, really the best. We're... Uh, Testing companies always trying to come up with fancy methods to test. Because LDL is just so dirt cheap, they're not making a lot of money on it. But uh, it's hard to really beat out LDL for um, uh, predicting uh, survival and cardiovascular disease risk. So I would stick with LDL. If someone ate a pure carnivore diet, how long? How long could they develop? How long could they develop? You mean how long until they would develop scurvy, the vitamin C deficiency disease? Um, uh, well, it depends if you ate raw meat. If you ate raw meat. I don't recommend eating raw meat. Um, don't recommend eating cooked meat. But uh, uh, raw meat has some vitamin C. That's how, you know, like the the you know the Inuit could survive uh, on you know eating you know whale whale carcasses um, without much food during the winter months, uh, but much plant food during the winter months. Um, how long does it take to develop scurvy? I've got videos about it. 
Um, I think it just takes a couple of weeks. In fact, I talk about my fasting video. Anyway, um, it, uh, it takes a while to develop, but that, that's of all. <laughs> Scurvy is not the reason why you don't want to do the carnivore diet. Uh, you don't want to do the carnivore diet because it's going to, uh, because of the saturated fat intake, the cholesterol intake, et cetera, et cetera. Um, uh, if you have elevated liver enzymes, can the liver heal? If you drink non-alcoholic beer and wine, well, the reason that your liver enzymes are high is because you, they've been suffering alcoholic damage uh, from the alcohol. And if you stop drinking alcohol, can your liver heal? Absolutely. Your liver has a remarkable ability to regenerate unless it's really far along. And so, yes, stop drinking alcohol. We would love it if you could share with us your stories about reinventing your health through evidence-based nutrition. Go to nutritionfacts.org slash testimonials. We may be able to share it on social media to help inspire others. To see any graphs, charts, graphics, images, or studies mentioned here, please go to the Nutrition Facts podcast landing page. There you'll find all the detailed information you need, plus links to all the sources we cite for each of these topics. My latest book, How Not to Age, is out now, which premiered at number two on the New York Times bestseller list. Check it out at your local public library. And of course, all the proceeds I receive from the sale of all my books goes directly to charity. NutritionFacts.org is itself a nonprofit, science-based public service where you can sign up for free daily updates on the latest in nutrition research via bite-sized videos and articles. Everything on the website is free. There are no ads, no corporate sponsorships, no kickbacks, strictly non-commercial, not selling anything. I just put it up as a public service, as a labor of love, as a tribute to my grandmother, whose own life was saved with evidence-based nutrition.